nuclear-powered submarines have traditionally held a decisive edge in endurance, stealth and speed over cheaper diesel submarines. Who would have guessed nuclear reactors are incredibly expensive? A-powered submarines have generally cost between $200 and $600 million, meaning a country could easily buy three or four medium-sized ape submarines instead of one nuclear attack submarine. A conventional submarine's diesel engine generates electricity which can be used to drive the propeller and power its systems. The problem is that such a combustion engine is inherently quite noisy and runs on air, a commodity in limited supply on an underwater vehicle. Thus, diesel-powered submarines must surface frequently to recharge their batteries. The first nuclear-powered submarines were brought into service in the 1950s. Nuclear reactors are quieter, don't consume air, and produce greater power output, allowing nuclear submarines to remain submerged for months instead of days while traveling at higher speeds underwater. These advantages led the US Navy to phase out its diesel boats in favor of an all-nuclear-powered submarine fleet. However, most other navies have retained at least some diesel submarines because of their much lower cost and complexity. In the 1990s, submarines powered by Air Independent Propulsion AIP, technology entered operational use. Though the concept dated back to the 19th century and had been tested in a few prototype vessels, it was left to Sweden to deploy the first operational A-powered submarine, the Gotland class, which proved to be stealthy and relatively long-enduring. The 60-meter-long Gotlands are powered by a Stirling cycle engine, a heat engine consuming a combination of liquid oxygen and diesel fuel. Since then, ape-powered submarines have proliferated across the world using three different types of engines, with nearly 60 operational today in 15 countries. Around 50 more are on order or being constructed. China has 15 Stirling-powered Yuan-class Type 039A submarines with 20 more planned, as well as a single large Type 032 missile submarine that can fire ballistic missiles. Japan for her part has 8 medium-sized Soryu-class submarines that also use Stirling engines, with 15 more planned for or under construction. The Swedes, for their part, have developed four different classes of Stirling-powered submarines. Germany has also built dozens of eight powered submarines most notably the small type 212 and 214, and has exported them across the globe. The German boats all use electrocatalytic fuel cells, a generally more efficient and quiet technology than the Stirling, though also more complex and expensive. Other countries intending to build fuel cell-powered submarines include Spain, the S-80, India, the Calvary class, and Russia, the Lada class. Broadly speaking, how do ape vessels compare in performance to nuclear submarines? Let's consider the costs and benefits in terms of stealth, endurance, speed and cost. Nuclear-powered submarines have become very quiet, at least an order of magnitude quieter than a diesel submarine with its engine running. In fact, nuclear-powered submarines may be unable to detect each other using passive sonar, as evidenced by the 2009 collision of a British and French nuclear ballistic missile submarines, both oblivious to the presence of the other. However, there's reason to believe that ape submarines can, if properly designed, swim underwater even more quietly. The hydraulics in a nuclear reactor produce noise as they pump coolant liquid, while an ape submarine's engines are virtually silent. Diesel-powered submarines can also approach this level of quietness while running on battery power, but can only do so for a few hours whereas an ape submarine can keep it up for days. Diesel and ape-powered submarines have on more than one occasion managed to slip through anti-submarine defenses and sink American aircraft carriers in war games. Of course, such feats have also been performed by nuclear submarines. Nuclear submarines can operate underwater for three or four months at a time and cross oceans with ease. While some conventional submarines can handle the distance, none have comparable underwater endurance. Ape submarines have narrowed the gap, however. While old diesel submarines needed to surface in a matter of hours or a few days at best to recharge batteries, new ape-powered vessels only need to surface every two to four weeks depending on type. Some sources make the unconfirmed claim that the German Type 214 can even last more than two months. Of course, surfaced submarines, or even those employing a snorkel, are comparatively easy to detect and attack. Nuclear submarines still have a clear advantage in endurance over ape boats, particularly on long-distance patrols. However, for countries like Japan, Germany and China that mostly operate close to friendly shores, extreme endurance may be a lower priority. Speed remains an undisputed strength of nuclear-powered submarines. 
U.S. attack submarine may be able to sustain speeds of more than 35 miles per hour while submerged. By comparison, the German Type 214's maximum submerged speed of 23 miles per hour is typical of ape submarines. Obviously, high maximum speed grants advantages in both strategic mobility and tactical agility. However, it should be kept in mind that even nuclear submarines rarely operate at maximum speed because of the additional noise produced. On the other hand, an ape submarine is likely to move at especially slow speeds when cruising sustainably using ape compared to diesel or nuclear submarines. For example, a Gotland-class submarine is reduced to just 6 miles per hour if it wishes to remain submerged at maximum endurance, which is simply too slow for long-distance transits or traveling with surface ships. Current ape technology doesn't produce enough power for higher speeds, and thus most ape submarines also come with noisy diesel engines as backup. Who would have guessed nuclear reactors are incredibly expensive? The contemporary U.S. Virginia-class attack submarine costs $2.6 billion, and the earlier Los Angeles-class before it around $2 billion in inflation-adjusted dollars. Midlife nuclear refueling costs add millions more. By comparison, ape-powered submarines have generally cost between $200 and $600 million, meaning a country could easily buy three or four medium-sized ape submarines instead of one nuclear attack submarine. Bear in mind, however, that the ape submarines are mostly small or medium-sized vessels with crews of around 30 and 60 respectively, while nuclear submarines are often larger with crews of 100 or more. They may also have heavier armament, such as vertical launch systems, when compared to most ape-powered vessels. Nevertheless, a torpedo or missile from a small submarine can hit just as hard as one fired from a large one, and having three times the number of submarine operating in a given stretch of ocean could increase the likelihood chancing upon an important target, and make it easier to overwhelm anti-submarine defenses. While ape vessels may not be able to do everything a nuclear submarine can, having a larger fleet of submarines would be very useful in hunting opposing ships and submarines for control of the seas. Nor would it be impossible to deploy larger ape-powered submarines. China has already deployed one, and France is marketing a cheaper ape-powered version of the Barracuda-class nuclear attack submarine. It is no surprise that navies that operate largely around coastal waters are turning to cheap ape submarines, as their disadvantage are not as relevant when friendly ports are close at hand. The trade-off in range and endurance is more problematic for the U.S. Navy, which operates across the breadth of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. This may explain why the U.S. Navy has shown little inclination to return to non-nuclear submarines. However, ape submarines operating from forward bases would represent a very cost-effective and stealthy means to expand the Navy's sea control mission.